Hi guys, welcome to our second video of our Japan series. Annie and I are on our way to the Tsukiji Fish Market. Google Maps is showing that the walk is an easy 11 minutes from our hotel to the Tsukiji Fish Market. Along the way, we pass the Tsukiji Hongwanji Buddhist Temple, a landmark that reflects Indian Buddhist architectural design, which confirmed that we were heading in the right direction to the Tsukiji Fish Market. The original temple was built in 1617 and was rebuilt a couple of times, once after a fire and the second rebuild was after the 1923 earthquake. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to see the temple in more detail, maybe on the next trip. Here we are at one of the main side entrances to the Tsukiji Fish Market. Based on the sign above, luggages are not allowed, so secure your check-in luggages before you go to Tsukiji. The market does get crowded. Not far from the entrance is this grilling stall. They had an assortment of seafood on the grill. Snow crab legs, squid, eel, and large fresh oysters. Gary and I bought two grilled oysters, still in their shells, for 1,000 yen each or a little over 9 US dollars. The oysters were a bit pricey but were very fresh and tasty. A nice snack to start our Tsukiji fish market experience. Walking through the fish market, one can hear different vendors informing passer buyers of what they're selling. Just another added element to the noisy marketplace, along with the many other visitors and shoppers. In addition to fresh seafood, there are dried goods, dried seafood, and of course, different types of tourist souvenirs as well. The Tsukiji market also has produce and fruit vendors. A box of 15 strawberries can be purchased, ranging from 3,000 to 2,500 yen. There are also other types of produce and other fruits. As another snack, Annie and I bought two large broiled scallops on a stick for 400 yen or around 367 US. Mm. After an hour of walking around, Annie and I ducked into this little restaurant off one of the main market corridors. We were hoping for an authentic seafood don bowl experience, and we got it. I ordered the Chotoro Ikora Unidon, which was filled with tuna, tuna roe eggs, sea urchin, and egg omelet over rice for 3,200 yen, or a little over $29. The extra unagi came from Annie's order. Annie got the Unidon bowl for 2,300 yen, or a little over $21. Both dishes were awesome. Hey. 
The salmon sashimi was great. Annie fought me for the last piece. It was that good. Wanting to take the subway from our hotel, we had two subway line choices to Asakusa, the Hibiya line or the Ginza line. We opted to take the Ginza line, which was a straight ride to Asakusa with no transfers and taking only 39 minutes and with the added bonus of exiting at the Asakusa station closest to the Kaminari Mon Gate, the main entrance to the Sensoji Temple. Crossing the intersection in front of the Kaminari Mon Gate requires patience and a little agility. There are two main pedestrian crosswalks which intersect the middle of the street. It was amazing that no one was knocked over or knocked out of their respective lanes. But the reward was reaching the other side to start our Asakusa Sensoji Temple experience. At the Kaminari Mon Gate, which translates to as the Thunder Gate, along with the iconic huge red lantern in the middle is seen first. However, looking more closely, one can see both sides that there are statues. On the left side is the God of Thunder, and on the right side is the Wind God, who are benevolent gods protecting Senjoji Temple from harmful calamities like flood and fire. And on the back side of the gate, there are other gods, Tenryu and Kinryu. Along the very long main Nakamisi Dori corridor, going towards the Sensoji Temple, on both sides of the street, it's lined with souvenir shops, little cafes, and food stalls. At one of the main Nakamise intersections, the sky tree can be seen at a distance. the Sensoji Temple, you will see devotees and visitors alike, making offerings by gently tossing a Japanese coin into a grilled offering box, wishing for good fortune, good health, or in general, just the prospects of a good future. To the size of the offering box, there are written fortunes where one can pull out a fortune stick randomly from a cylinder filled with fortune sticks. The stick has a written number on it, which corresponds to a fortune drawer number. In the drawer is a written prediction. If one likes a prediction, the devotee or visitor can take as a lucky keepsake. If the prediction predicts bad luck, the devotee or visitor can tie the written prediction at a nearby designated temple location and ask the gods to help avoid the bad luck.
Gary and I found this small, affordable teppanyaki steakhouse restaurant at one of the Nakamise street intersections. We'll place a link below for the Suteki House Nobu restaurant. One of their specialties is omelet rice, or just simply called omu rice. In addition to the omu rice, Gary and I also ordered a tenderloin and a sirloin steak to round out our awesome lunch. On this trip, we have been very lucky with our restaurant choices and the Suteki House Nobu restaurant did not disappoint. The gentleman who owned the restaurant is also the chef who prepared our lunch. total lunch for the omu rice and two steaks came out to 4,400 yen or a little over $40 US. We will definitely come back for a second visit. When visiting the Hiei Shrine in Akasaka, know that there are two main entrances to the shrine. If you want to experience the more traditional stone steps to the shrine, then use the east entrance. want the more modern entrance experience, then the west entrance is where you want to start. There's even an escalator. enters the shrine grounds, one should complete the Temizuya cleansing purification ritual by using water. Completing the Temizuya expresses one's respect prior to entering the inner shrine grounds.
The ritual is as follows. With your right hand, fill the cup with the swimming water, then rinse the left hand first. Switch the cup and then rinse the right hand. Switch the cup again and fill your left hand with water in order to sip from your left hand to rinse one's mouth. And then dispense the water from your mouth and dispense the remaining water in the cup by tilting upwards to also cleanse the stem of the handle. After the Temizuya cleansing water ritual, you can now proceed to the inner shrine grounds. The Hiei Shrine is popular for couples wanting to take unique pre-wedding photos in such a serene location. And not only pre-wedding photos, but the Hiei Shrine is also a special place for couples wanting a traditional Japanese wedding. Behind the shrine, down a pathway lined with red and white banners, the famous Hiei Red Toy Gates can be found. Don't make the mistake in going up the Red Toy Gates from the street to enter the shrine grounds, but rather respectfully use either the east or west main entrances to the shrine. Thank you for joining Gary and I today. We are going to close out this video with some random shots of visitors at the Hiei Shrine. We had such a great time. Please check out our other travel videos and do subscribe to our channel and share with family and friends. Be sure to check out our Full Japan video series. Till the next time and safe travels. Arigatou gozaimasu.